Hi, I'm the Mini Painting Noob. Today I'm going to be painting Sir K from the board game Shadows Over Camelot. I'm going to be using a mix of speed paints. We'll start with a bit of dry brushing to bring out some highlights, and there's a fair amount of metallics as well. So I hope you enjoy this video. Like and comment, subscribe. I uh, appreciate the comments and your subscription so far. Let's crack into it. This is the mini here for Sir K. Standing upright, sword in front, got a cape, shield on the back. If we have a look at his card from the game, you can see he is staunch looking fella. Color scheme is silver armor, blue cloak. There's some details there with leather and bronze work. Um, there's no indication what color his shield is, but we can kind of make it educated guess. Uh, it looks like a, a horn. So we've got some options. We could go some, um, maybe it's bone, maybe it's metallic. Uh, so we'll make some decisions as we go along. But to start with, um, I'm going to try some lighting. So I just appreciate some comments from you guys on um, lighting. So I'm going to turn on, actually I can't turn it on now because I've started filming. I was going to turn on the camera flash, but I can't. Just leave it at that. Just let me know what this lighting is like. Do you like it? Is it too dark? So I'm going to just start with some dry brushing on some of the areas that we're going to put speed paints. Uh, so just using a small brush this time and mostly his face. Just want to get some extra white on the areas where we're putting speed paints. Um, just because they show up better on bright surfaces. So I'll just bring those out a bit. Um, and I'm not sure what we're doing with the shield yet, so we'll just bring that horn out. If we're speed painting it, we want that to pop. So we'll just go around the edges of this. And no harm if it's metallics. Um, do you guys do highlights under metallics? I'm not sure whether it's necessary or not. They're quite opaque, right? Um, but let's just do a few highlights on these raised surfaces anyway. This is quite a strong zenithal, so I don't think much highlighting is needed. very small amount and just on the sword there again I'm not sure whether you need highlighting under metallics but let's go with it just the front of the mini making sure that when you're looking at him all those details pop all right that's probably enough of the highlighting now, what you're really here for is the speed paint, right? So let's uh, let's get into that. So the color options we have, and we are none, so he is blue. Um, so we have High Lord Blue. I think it's a pretty decent match to the character card. It looks like a pretty decent match there. So. We're just going to use straight high lord blue and give that a shake. This goes on to a dry palette. Don't use speed paints on a wet palette. Uh, they will make a mess. Uh, that's noob tip number one for this video. How's that? Um, now for this I'm going to use my Army Painter Monster Brush. It's a bit worse for wear actually. 
um, it has lost some of its tip. I'm just wetting it a bit to get that tip back. I'm rolling it around on the cloth. All right. Cool. All right. So the cloth. Um, I think we will get into some of these harder to reach places first. I might zoom in a bit so you guys can see. How's that? All right. Let's just try and get into these areas. In here. Let's not worry too much about hitting other stuff. Um, we're going over with metallics, so it shouldn't be too much of an issue getting behind the sword there. Quite a messy painter. Oops, right in front of the sword. Right on the thing. We can fix some of that by just wetting it down. So that's kind of what I like about speed paint. You just if you accidentally hit something, you can wet it down and it will come off. Some of the armor as well. All right. So there we have blue behind him. Um, probably do have a little bit more in those recesses. There we go. All right, yeah, we've got blue along the side here. Am I doing this right, you guys? Let me know in the comments below. Guys brush differently, do you do cloaks differently? I hear they're quite difficult to get smooth, right? This is my first cloak I think, so let's find out. I'm coming up a bit behind here. up under his shoulder pad I don't know if I should be putting more on because let it do its pulling thing right. see if that does it I'm coming to do the back a little bit later. That's the front done. I don't even know if any of that was on camera. My apologies if it wasn't. Okay, let's put some around this side. How best to do that. Alright, coming in here. He's got a little dagger right in the where I'm wanting to paint blue. Let's try and miss it. There we go, he did a good job. Right, down the side of his leg here. Probably need a bit more paint. Blue is really hard to paint, it's coming up. Um, interesting. Or a cloak. Mm. Oh well. 
It is what it is. Alright. And then I think it goes up as front as well. Looking at the picture, in here is blue. And it must wrap around his shoulder. Alright, so how's that for first impressions? Okay, on to the main event. Up around the back. Let's go under the shield. Up behind the shield, down below the arm. And then just run it down. Plenty of it. Just paint one direction, are you not the band, but you know, the paint brush style, or do you go backwards and forwards, do you dab? There's a lot of different techniques for handling a brush, and there's not many videos, I haven't seen any videos that do any kind of detail on strokes, you know, should I go against the flow of the cloak? Should I go with the flow of the cloak? Um, against kind of makes sense when you're trying to make it pull, right? Because then it's rubbing off the high points, leaving uh, paint into the low points. So I think in this case, against makes sense. So if Alright. There we have it. One cloak. I shouldn't really touch up this area because it's drying. It will peel off. That's the blue. Okay, fun part, skin. So we have Crusader skin, so we'll shake this up. One little drop. You don't need very much of this at all. Or do you guys drop more than you need? I'm not sure how this works. Okay, I'm getting right up close here. I might um, put my magnifiers on so I can see properly. Okay, that is focused for you. Mm, this is now focused for me. Alright. Not too worried about getting his hair. We're going to go over with a mix of this and dark brown for his hair in a minute. Can we get his ear and all the way around his neck? Got a bit of pulling in that eye, a little bit too much. And around the back of his neck. Oops. Getting his shield, not his neck.
All right, so if we fix that shield up. Perfect. All right, oh, back in frame. There we go. How's that looking? Clearly see his ear, eyes, nose, mouth. Maybe a little bit too much pulling in that area right there. Here we go. Got it. Nice, I think that's looking pretty good. Okay, so the next step is, is here, which is a blonde. I'm not wanting it to um, sort of mix in, it's sort of a similar tone to his skin actually, but um, I'm not too worried about matching the character card too much. I want it to stand out a bit more, so I'm going to go a bit darker. So I'm going to just put a little bit of hardened leather in with that skin colour to tone the hardened leather down. Uh, so it's not too dark. So just do the tiniest drip into that skin tone I already had. And then mix that up. So it's probably a one-to-one, -one, probably less, probably less hardened leather than one-to-one -one actually. So just a very slightly darker skin tone. And let's do his hair. So focus up for you guys. And here we go. Very clearly darker. This is great. So I like how the um, speed paints mix so well, and you kind of, I kind of know what I'm going to get um, in mixing them. There we go. Probably quite caught all of that. So the speed paint very nicely sits in the recesses of the hair, pulls away from the highlights. And by I think doing that little uh, white highlighting that we did earlier, it just makes the speed paint colours brighter. Um, so it's good to do that, especially for your focus points like a hair. Um, that's what people are going to be looking at, right? This part. All right. So having a look at the model, what we've got left is done his face in here, we've done his cloak, we've got metallics pretty much everywhere except for a few belts. Uh, it's probably easier to go metallics everywhere and then uh, let's have a look, maybe it will be easier to can I go no that's quite a wide belt I think I can get the brown on to that belt. Just get rid of some of that blue. Um, if you can see this, I'm just there's a little blue on that belt. And even though I painted it quite a few minutes ago, it's just coming right off with a bit of water. Just sort of um, you drag it around a little bit, and it mops up. So 
It might make the whole model just a little bit blue, but like the sword here is looking fairly blue as it dries. Yeah, and there's a little bit here. Just reactivate it with some water and then lift it off, wipe it on a cloth, lift it off, wipe it on a cloth, lift it off. There we go. It's off that shoulder guard. Okay, so I think what I'll come in and do the belt with that hardened leather. So, hard leather again, let's get a drop of that, whoops that was about four drops, and for this I'm going to use a finer brush, so I'll go with a standard brush from Army Painter, and we're just going to come and do the belts, you can see running around his chest there. Or waste rather. Okay, so we've got our finer brush coming in. And trying not to hit the sword. I think he's got a buckle even behind that. His miniatures are incredibly detailed when they don't have to be. You don't see the buckle behind the sword, but it's there. You see it with a magnifier, but you don't see it when you're playing the board game. It's insane. Let's touch the top of his head. Is it alright? Let's put a bit more brown on that. Alright. Um, so... His sword hilt going up here in the picture is also brown. So we can paint that. And here's a few other sword hilts. We must tackle those as well while we're here. It'd be easier. I'm hitting the blue. I need to do it without hitting the blue. Okay, so right in this cape, you probably, it's very difficult to see, there is a sword or dagger tucked in. And I just want to cover that in brown. There we go. And then he's got another one on the other side, the same. This is where we find out what happens when you mix speed paint brown with speed paint blue. There's a little bit of overlap. Uh, speed paint really is a color between the lines product, and if you miss the line, it does pay to clean it up if you can. Otherwise you might get some weird colour problems. That's why I'm doing these mop-ups uh, where possible. To just remove colour that's not supposed to be there. Okay, that mini is looking so much better than it was before. Um, not sure if I'm allowed to do this yet because it's not quite dry, but there's a wet dot right here. I don't know if I yeah, I'll wait for it to dry and we'll see what it looks like. I'm tempted to run my brush over it, but that's um gonna cause a problem with it drying, right? Okay. So Next up we have silver. Now 
uh, speed paint obviously doesn't have a silver so instead I'm using Vallejo model color straight silver right, so give this a shake should have shaken these before the video I've loaded all of my paints um, with the army paint and balls I don't have a vortex spinner so I'm not do shaking the paints the hard way That's enough. Looks nice and silvery on the palette. I'm just using a dry palette for all of this. Um, I'm not sure if metallics can go on a wet palette. Let me know if they can, because um, that would be interesting to know. All right, so where to start? Um, okay, it's <laughs> a good place for him in my magnifier, so that's a good place for him in your view. All right, let's start. Let's go top down. Looks like he's wearing a little. A little undershirt, so at the moment that's painted white, that's probably fine. Pr left primer, left primer white. So just going over the guard here and his chest. Just globbing it onto the shoulder pad. Right, still on the foot. Nope, I moved. Sorry. I need to remember to keep you guys in mind. Looks like I might have globbed too much on there. The word glob was a bad indication of what this was going to look like. Okay, and then his arm. I think I should be using a different brush for this. Doing metallics with the um, with the monster brush might be why it's not lasting. Just getting metallics on that blue. Well, the good thing about metallics and speed paint is you can always go over the metallic with the speed paint. Um, those look really awesome according to the videos and experiments I've seen online. These gauntlets are also silver, so just keep going. I've thinned this metallic. Do you guys use it straight out of the pot? It appears to be going on fairly thick. Just worried I'm losing detail. shoulder and arm and his chest done on one side. Okay, so a little bit under his arm here. 
Okay, well, you know, I should have used a smaller brush for that. Let's swap over to an El Cheeto brush I have never used before. He's got bristles flying all over the show. Who? No, let's not use that one. Um, let's check this one. Don't want to wreck my good brushes. Yeah, that one's got a really nice point, but it. Uh, a pack of about eight brushes it was the uh, same price as one. Um, uh, you know, hobby brush. Okay, just taking some of that metallic out that I stuck in there earlier. where it needs to go much better alright so other side let's see if this brush performs better maybe not put so much on it Seems to be working all right. These very tight areas right next to his face. It's getting right there where the shoulder pad goes. Right in there. And I've got speed paint on that armor. So this is gonna end up being a face colored metallic part. When you're playing a board game, um, you're not looking that close to the model, are you? Um, so hopefully, hopefully this is just enough to make my game nights more interesting. Here I've got blue on his elbow. That will result in a slightly blue colored metallic. So maybe I should have done the metallics first. Uh, let me know in the comments. What order should I have painted this? Or did I do it right? It's about speed and ease and uh, finished product. Um, This is the first uh, full mini I painted end to end on camera. Um, probably first mini I painted end to end ever. Uh, usually I've been doing uh, sort of batch painting colors, so I'd crack open a color and have you know four or five minis needing that color, and you know so just painting little bits and pieces. Get everything done that needed a yellow, get everything done that needed a red. Um, so this guy is my first end to end. Get everything done at once. I've got the metallic over his blue part of that cloak there. See what happens if I pull it off. That metallic doesn't react to water the same way 
speed paint does and I'm just getting blue all over that shoulder pad actually this is one I painted a long time ago so it's probably in a drying state but that blue has reactivated because I got it wet oh silly me Oh, let's uh, leave that. Maybe I can just touch up, maybe going over with a bit more fresh silver. Okay, we'll leave that as that and go over that with some blue once we're done. Okay, so that is the top portion. Done. Now let's move to the lower portion. Alright, so his skirt thing. I should learn the names of these pieces. So I'm going to be painting so many of them. We don't want to get his sword right here because it's going to be bronze, not silver. So we can't just slap it on willy-nilly. Okay, just got some silver on his cape. Is that drying? Is that silver? Is that shiny? It's drying. I think that's silver. Gotta be more careful where I put my brush. Oh uh, yep, I got silver all over his cape now. And I've got blue all over his leg. This is turning out rather nooby. So welcome to the channel. The mini painting noob with the blue leg armor. Uh, this is exactly the stuff you expect from a noob. I mean, here is the blue player's figure. Maybe blue armor is cool. Do I just run with it? Yeah, that looks really cool. It's not what I wanted. It's supposed to be silver. Not blue silver. Just keep on going. Layer it up. Let's see what happens. I think I've got drips of water on my brush as well. It's probably not helping. There's blue right there. I need to dab off. off his leg and then it might fix the rest of it. I guess the other thing I could have done, I mean I wanted to do this in one video, um, but if I didn't have the Well, to do this in one video, I could have uh, done all the speed paint, then spray over it with a matte varnish, which I don't own yet, it's in the mail. Um, and then, then do the metallics, and then I wouldn't have a color run issue. Okay, that's going on more silver now. Mm. 
right down to the shoes. Okay. Still a little bit blue in that metallic, could probably be sorted with another coat. So let's uh, keep going this side of the leg. And we've got a little bit of blue here. So there are options of that little teeny bit of blue on the knee. Slap some thick silver on it. That's what I'm going to go with. Slap some thick silver on it. The other option is uh, reactivate it with water and get it off. I think I might have had too much water on my brush. That metallic has kind of got all wet. Very thin, starting to get bubbly even. A child has entered my room of solitude. And he's about to make a truckload of noise with Lego. If you can see this, I'm painting the inside of his leg here, and it's quite challenging to get an angle. And of course, this is where I painted the uh, blue earlier so there's blue right up in there that inside leg um, so hopefully we're not reactivating it Leg is going pretty good. It's looking nice. Alright. Let's hope that other leg was a little bit drier. So let's um, go another coat. Maybe a little bit more. It's quite thin coat, so that blue is still coming through. less recognizable when you're holding it further away now okay so we've got the front metallics just about done so we've got all of his lower armor upper armor actually that brown has seeped how did that happen so that skirt there on the right you can see that brown from that dagger I'm sure that wasn't there before. Um, speed paint moves. Well, oh, that was a lot of metallic on that blue right there. I 
and clean it off. Dad? Felix? Um, do you know where one of these bits well does this side? Of these bits well does this side? You're looking for a smaller Lego red thing? Yep. Um, no, I'm not sure where smaller Lego red things are. I'm just going to put some blue over this metallic. Um, hide my ears. He's such a small mini, you're not really going to tell, are you? And we'll just brush over. Here we go. All right, so the sword blade is silver. We've got silver out, so let's do that. Still in focus here, good folks. Good. So, sword blade starts up here. I bother doing behind the sword? Yeah, it probably didn't even get primed, you know what I mean? Like it's, you can't see it. Let's make sure I get the edges painted down at the tip. And then we'll do some strokes in a downward motion. To kind of smooth it out. Wipe off the excess. And smooth it out. Now that is not looking that metallic. So I'll probably have to come in with another coat. Uh, assuming I just wiped most of the metallic off. You know what I mean? Alright, so that is... The front of the figure almost done. We just have the bronze. And at the back of the figure we have the shield. Now we have free reign on this shield. Um, it kind of looks like it's made out of two pieces, so that could indicate that it's made out of wood. So we'll come in here with some dark oak. This will make the those circle bits really pop. Um, Speed paint will settle in those little circle holes. Whoops. It's the. Oops, you didn't even see that. I just got speed paint all over the horn. And it wasn't a brush stroke that did it, it was me just moving the brush away from the figure. Yeah, so I need to clean that up. That was literally, literally one dip of brown did that entire area. And while wet it looks fantastic. Uh, to see if it still looks that great when it's dry. I think I'll just leave the horn brown. If we go over the horn with bronze, the brown undercoat will actually be fine. Um, now we need a colour for the outer rim, and it looks like it's silver. 
for the picture from the picture. So let's just try and clean up this spill here. It's going to affect the silver, that brown right there. Give it a crack, silver around the edge. Yep, hit some brown already. It's gonna be a dirty looking shield. I haven't decided if I'm going over all of this metallic with some kind of wash yet. Um, should I go over it with a speed paint? Like a Grave Lord Grey? It's quite a dark grey. Um, uh, there's some more greys coming out at the end of March, so I could wait for uh, wait for the new products to come out. I have uh, pre-ordered uh, all of them so I do have the option of some additional colors later but I do want to get some minis finished now all right I think I need some more silver on my palette maybe a little bit Let's get in focus. So I'm getting blue on the shield and I'm getting silver on the cloak. That's just fantastic. So the mini painting noob needs to learn how to hold his brush steady. I'm using, uh, I think it's two and a half or three times magnification in addition to my regular glasses. Can you see that? So it's coming in into the underside of the rim here. Yep. Okay, that looks pretty good. It's a bit of brown bleeding. Um, just doing a little bit of dragging like this seems to do, deal with it. So put a little bit of silver on and then just drag. I suppose it's a drag without double dipping. And it seems to deal with it. It's looking fantastic. And that area that was before that looked like a mistake, it's actually come out really nice. So it's a really deep crease in that cloak there. It looks fine to me.
Oops, excuse me. All right. A um, little bit more silver on the leg. I can see there's quite a bit of blue bleed. And then we'll get some gold. Should we get some gold out? Um, and I'll do some gold on the horn and on the... Uh, it's not the hilt, but whatever that pieces in the middle of the sword there. Okay, so I'm going to hold the model upside down and that will give me some extra uh, access to in this area where all that blue is coming from. And just paint over it. brown was coming from paint over it trying not to lose detail okay cool well I have it at this angle I might try a really tiny brush Put a bit more blue in the back here, trying not to touch anything else. Clean the bristles and we'll try on the other side. It's going to really want the blue on the tip, so if I rub the sides of the brush against something else, it's not going to affect it. So we can go upright and look right in there. And I'm going. Oops. <laughs> so how good my aim is. Even with three times magnification. Alright, so now I've got a blue spot to fix it. Bloody noob. I'm not ever going to get good at this hobby. bit more silver on the sword should be about ready for another fix up there that was quite a lot wetter oops maybe that was a good thing I don't know um, all right gold last color for this model Stick him here. Got a nice grin on his face. He's not quite uh, grumpy like this dude. He's a very. Uh, got a bit of a smirk on him. What's he smiling about? Little teeny weeny drop of gold. Again on a dry palette using a super cheap brush so I don't wreck my good ones. 
don't know if that's the right way to think about it. Maybe I should be using the good ones. What do you reckon? Let me know in the comments. Brush selection. When do you use good brushes and when do you use bad ones? Well, this gold is really nice. It's going on great. It was going on great. It's not going on in that particular place there. It just keeps sliding off. Unless it's how the light's catching it. Some snake-like S wrapping details in there on one side, and the sculpt doesn't quite have it on the other side. Um, so one side has the detail, one side doesn't. But it does. It's just very faint. Hard to see. Moving it out of the view again. Okay, there we go. Front view done. So he probably needs a bit of touch up with the cape. Uh, it's not looking like the shading's that flash. Uh, the belt looks good. I missed the belt of the silver. Um, the daggers are okay. Looks like they've got some brown on the daggers. His face isn't too bad. I think I'll just leave it at that. I'm not going to be doing eyes on a mini this small. Alright, let's tackle that horn. So. I know this is like really soon after painting the speed paint, so it's not going to be dry. I'm not expecting it to be. In fact, I'm kind of expecting it to react. I'm interested to see what it does. I can't really see it doing anything at the moment. I'm just sort of layering this on. Very, very gently. Um, maybe that's the trick. Maybe I'm not seeing it do anything because Brown is a really good undercoat for gold. Alrighty. There we have it. Gold horn on the back of a brown shield. There's a cloak there. It's got some highlights. Got some blue there yeah what do you reckon no oh, we needed to put a bit more blue in the head didn't we so I'm not going to take the metallic off I think there's no point in doing that I think we just go over whoa okay that ran everywhere oh, that brush was obviously way too wet Okay, noob, freaking noob. It just ran all the way down here, even. Okay, I might get an absolute 
dry brush I've never used before and come in and circle all that up. This is where those cheap crappy brushes are good for, right? So this is the one I opened earlier and it's sort of all flayed out the sides, there's bristles going everywhere. So they get in there and dry that mess. There we go, that's looking much better. Okay. Try that again with a dry brush. We want a tiny dot of the blue. In fact, I might not use this is where those good brushes are for, right? Answer my own question. And get in on a tight spot with a really good point. Use an expensive brush. He's wearing a white shirt, like I said before. Um, I don't have a color except for straight up white. Um, uh, but Army Painter are releasing shortly a color called Holy White, um, which I will be getting very soon. Um, so I could go over him with that um, once I receive that color. Okay, so with a blue back in there, just to give an indication that that cape wraps around. Alright, the last thing we have to do is the rock he's standing on. Um, and the models came with the colour, not sure if you can see here, let's take them off. Take them off. This stuff is really sticky. So, this is the player color in the board game, this blue. Now what I'm figuring is you don't need a blue base because we now have a blue cape. So your player color is going to be represented by the color of your figure now. So what I can do is paint that, I don't have to paint that base blue anymore. It was blue and I primed it white. So what we can do is come in with a Gravelord Grey and make him stand on a rock. So I hadn't planned this, but you know, when you're painting, I think um, it's a little bit of see how things go, right? And. Uh, Whatever feels good, you let the model speak to you. And this model is saying, I want to stand on a big black rock. Now this is a dark grey, not um, a black. So there's again, um, Army Painter are releasing a colour called Grim Black at the end of the month. Um, so that may be better, but let's give this a go, see what it turns out like, this will hopefully cover up my mistakes, we got blue on the edge of the model there, got metallic all over the base, when he's dry we'll see what kind of a state he's in, and um, yeah, when he's arm's length from your face when you're playing a, he, him in a board game, is it good enough? And do I want 
good enough. What do I want? High definition. Just go over with some more coats, just getting that extra shading in. Dad, can I paint after you? That's a great idea. You want to do some painting too? Yeah. Will you let me? Yeah, so Felix has got some models that he wants to paint. Um, so, we're going to do some videos. I'm going to do some videos. Yeah, Felix is going to do some videos. <laughs> got some grey on his boot there. Sort of walked its way up. Let's just soak that up. Maybe it walked its way up that one as well. So does speed paint defy gravity? Does it leech its way up models? Yeah, it is looking. Are you going to say the things that I'm painting? Yeah, we'll show everybody the things you're painting in the next video. Well, I don't know how to say the colours because I don't know the colours. Uh, how about I say all the colours and you can just do the painting and I'll do all the talking. Alright, let's uh, do a bit more silver on the sword, wanting it to really shine. I think because it's such a flat surface, it's Dad? sort of not coming I out. Had this, I know what I wanted to say in first when I start the video. Okay. And I want to say hi everybody. I'm from Kenny Kenny School and I'm going to paint this mini figure right now. That's a great thing to say. Alrighty, I think he's done an hour and 12 minutes with speed paint and metallics. Um, all in one hit with a bit of highlighting at the start. What do you guys reckon? Did you make it all the way through the video? Uh, like this video if you want to see more comment content like it. Subscribe to my channel to check out my son's first use of speed paint. Um, he is five and let's see if a, a child can use the product. So let me know what you think of this model in the comments below. Like and subscribe. I'm a noob and this isn't very good. But there you go. See you in the next one.